Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this big fella right here, Robin Hood and the Merry Men. It is uh, designed by a quintet of designers, um, uh, most of which I'm not going to be able to pronounce, but I'll give it a whirl. Ivana and Voishkin, uh, Krzyzewski, uh, Tony Toshevsky, Maya Matoska, and Martin Poole. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but I'm trying to give you credit for what you've done with this game. Uh, it's for one to five players, 25 minutes per player, and it is for people 14 years of age and older. Put out by Final Frontier Games. All right. <sighs> Got all that out of the way. It's a worker placement game, and it's a pretty meaty one at that. Let's get down to the table, and I'll show you how it works, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in a few moments. Let's hit it. All right, so the point of Robin Hood and the Merry Men is to get the most points, and that's tracked by your little acorn marker here around the outside of the board. You're also going to be trying to get as high a reputation as you possibly can over here. At the end of the game, the person who has the most points wins if certain conditions are uh, kept from being met during the course of the game. For example, if any one road runs out of all of their coins, uh, all of the players lose. If this track over here gets filled up with uh, guards, then the all of the players lose and the game automatically ends. But if you hold all of those different factors at bay, keeping in mind there are four different roads that you have to watch at, at any point in time, then at the end of the fifth round, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now the game is played in two phases. You have your merry men phase where your workers are going to be going out and getting different kinds of resources, performing different tasks. And then you will have a hero phase, which will be where your hero has the opportunity to go out and do two different things. It's also the point in time where uh, the sheriff and his motley band of ruffians will be taking care of their business throughout the Dale as well. You also will get three tasks from King Richard, and these are just simply uh, goals that you're trying to accomplish by the end of the game. For example, uh, you will get uh, vic two victory points for every level of reputation that you have over here on the reputation track. Uh, on this one, if this site, for every uh, village that this site doesn't have a guard in, you'll get two points for that. Same thing for this one in the church. Now you're going to perform different tasks by taking your workers and placing them out onto different areas of the board and performing whatever task that part of the board allows you to do. But in order to do that, you have to be playing these Merry Men cards uh, that have a different uh, things on them. For example, these are actions that you will be able to play if you play this actively. If you play it passively, it simply allows you to get this many victory points if it is still in your passive area at the end of the game. So this one might not be one you play in passively, but this one might be because she's going to give you one point at the end of the game. Now, playing actively or passively just simply denotes which side of your player board you're going to be playing it on. If you play it on the right-hand side of the board, where this banner up here matches, then you're going to be playing it for its actions abilities. If you play this one down there, then you'll be able to choose. Either you can go on a quest for uh, in the Crusades with King Richard, or you'll be able to go to the lumber mill and get two wood. Now, along with that, if you play actively, you'll be able to play in these areas on the board, and I'll show you what those are in just a few moments, but they are the village areas like this right here. Now, if you play passively, like this guy over here, he's going to be giving you this many points at the end of the game. That's why this banner matches up. All of this doesn't really have any effect. When you play passively, you can go on to any spot on the board as long as it is in the center circle, not one of the outlying uh, villages. The first thing you can do is you can gather resources. As you can see, each spot on the board has these different things that that area provides. So you've got weaponry over here, you've got ore, wood, um, distraction tokens, or should I say uh, mead or something to that effect. And then you have tools down here. You can also go over here to the build area where you can build uh, either traps, 
I'm sorry, you can build either barricades or traps over here. And then you can also come up here during the Merry Men phase uh, to send an envoy to the Crusades to help out King Richard. And those are generally the areas that you can send your uh, Merry Men to during the Merry Men phase. Uh, again, if you play it actively, you'll be placing them out here on the uh, village areas. And if you play it passively, you'll be able to go anywhere on the board on these little general areas here. You can also go into the town square here and rob from the rich. And if you go actively, you're placed out here on some of these different uh, areas. If you go passively, you're just placed in here like this. Both areas are the same. However, as far as what you do, you'll just get a little bit of an extra bonus if you go out here. And robbing from the witch rich is basically you're simply going to be rolling three dice for your first one, and you have to get one success. So uh, I rolled my three dice. I got one success. These are failures. And so I'll be able to pull one uh, resource from this bag. But I can push my luck, and instead of rolling three dice now, I can roll two. And if I still get one success, then I'll be able to pull a second one from the bag. And if I want to push my luck even further still, I can roll again. And if I win and I get it, then I'll get three uh, pulls from this bag. Or if like what happened when I actually rolled the die. If I fail, then my worker is going to have to be put over here into the prison, and then a hero will have to come and try to break him out of prison later on. I mentioned earlier you can come over here to the building area and build your uh, barricades or traps. Those are important because every time these guys activate and come into the city, we're going to be losing tokens from these piles. Traps come into play out here on these areas and on these areas here because you'll be able to place a trap in one of these areas and when a guard is placed on them they are captured and then you can turn them in for a ransom at the end of the game. Sometimes you can turn in one guard for for example this one says two wood and one one tool or if you have three guards, you'll be able to turn them in for 12 victory points. And of course, these will change uh, from round to round as well. And then finally, the, the last thing that your uh, heroes can do is send an envoy out to King Richard's Crusades. And basically, you would simply have to pay this uh, price, two dice, two coins, and two resources of your choice, and then send one of your workers out here. And they are done for the game. Uh, because they're off on the Crusades as an envoy for King Richard. But it is going to help you score uh, these cards right here at the end of the game. As a matter of fact, you cannot score these cards unless you have sent envoys for them. Now, the first thing that we do during the hero phase is we draft weapon dice that we're going to be using at these different uh, spots on the board that we could possibly be going to. Whoever has the first player token is going to be going first. They will draft one die, and then the person, the people in uh, clockwise order will, will also draft one die until you get to the last person. They'll draft two, and then it comes back around until finally the first person uh, is able to draft their final dice, with everybody getting to draft two altogether. After that's taken care of, then the heroes are going to be each taking turns, and their turn consists of, first of all, drawing a villain card and carrying out whatever it says on it. So this particular card here says that one guard is going to be placed in uh, this area right here, and so he will be placed right there. Then it says that the sheriff goes to the lumber yard. So the sheriff is taken, and he goes up here to the lumber yard like so, the problem with that is that whenever he goes to the uh, an area, he also takes a couple more guards with him and they fill in extra spots like this, which is problematic because when areas, when all the areas like this are filled up with guards, that's when this track starts to get populated with guards. And if that is ever full, then the game is over and the um, merry men have lost. Finally, on this particular card, it says that the north road activates. So this road right here will activate, which means that this will jump this natural barricade here. And if there aren't any more barricades to keep it from going in, it will go all the way in and be placed over here in the first column, which says that a coin is removed from that road. So a coin would be removed and that goes right there. So in subsequent rounds, you could be losing two coins and three coins 
which is problematic. These roads only have 10 coins to start off with in a four player game. Once all of the things are taken care of on this card, it is discarded and the hero then has two actions that he can carry out. Now the first thing that your heroes can do is you can go out and rob carriages on these different roads. Now if they do that, they have to roll two dice that match the color of the carriage that is on the road and they're looking for at least one success. If they get one success, they'll be able to take this and put it down on its side anywhere on this board. And if you do, whatever row you place it on, that's the reward that you get for doing that. Now, another thing that your hero can do is come out here and fight guards at the gathering sites. Now, in order to do that, you have to have a die, at least one die, that matches at least one of these two colors. You have to have an axe or a pole staff right here. And you can roll it. If you get a success, you get to uh, take this guy off the board and you'll get reputation for doing that. You can also break prisoners out of jail over here by uh, placing your hero in this spot, spending a number of uh, distraction tokens. Uh, basically, you're boozing up the guards so that they aren't as... Uh, uh, on guard as they usually are and for every distraction token that you spend you get to roll two dice and You're simply looking for one success on the first level of the dungeon uh, Two successes to remove one person on from the second level or three successes to remove uh, one person from the third level. You can also send your hero over here to uh, participate in the archery competition. And it's simply very, sim very similar to what's going on over here from Stealing from the Rich. You're gonna be rolling three dice, looking for one success. If you wanna push your luck, three dice, looking for two successes. And uh, if you want to push your luck further, it's three dice looking for three successes. But unlike over here stealing from the rich, you will not go to prison if you fail at these different competitions. You can also go over here and give money back to the poor. You can spend two money to remove one guard from this area over here, which is also helpful. And uh, then finally, you can send your heroes up here to purchase more weapon dice to be used in different areas over here. If you're able to last until the fifth round in the semi-cooperative version of the game, then at the end of the, that fifth round, points will be tabulated, partially determined by where you are, what level you're on in the reputation track. Uh, you'll also get points for your tasks that you may have sent envoys to to help out King Richard in the Crusades. Um, you will get points for a certain number of goods and resources that you have left over. One point for every three, I think, is what it is. And then also any passive characters that you have played beside your board will also give you some points. And there's also a little bit of a, a set collection aspect going on there as well, where you have, if you have more of the same kind of character, you'll get a, a little bit of a bonus as well. And then whoever has the most points at the end of all of that tabulation is the winner, provided that you kept at bay uh, Prince John and his cronies. All right, so that's about that for Robin Hood and the Merry Men. As I said before, I cannot uh, take the time to show you every single detail that is in this uh, game because there are a slew of single details in this game and, and uh, they're very hard to keep track of when you have the rulebook open and player aids and other player aids that you may have printed out because the player aids that came in the box uh, didn't really do the trick. I do appreciate player aids. We'll get to this in a little bit though. First of all, pros of the game. Component quality is off the charts. Now, I, I did have and I do have the deluxe version of the game where uh, the player boards are dual layered and so they have those little recesses that the components sit in real nicely. Uh, so I, 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 I don't want to go too over the top here because I, I don't know that the retail version is going to be as blingtastic as uh, this version is. But for this version of the game, which is the only one that I've had experience with, component quality is amazingly well done. Now, you saw the little reference sheet that I showed you where the components are going to be slightly different, not as nice, but they aren't bad. Um, if they are anything like 
any of the other Euro games that are coming out and those components. If you're used to those kinds of things, the retail version is going to be like that. It won't be as uh, blinktastic, that's my new word for the day, as this one is, but it is. it will still be good. Good quality, I think. The card quality of, of the different cards in the game is very well done. A good, nice linen finish. Good card stock uh, was used on all of them. So that is also very good. Additionally, the artwork is also a pro for me because it's the same artist that did uh, the other ones like uh, Raiders of the North Sea, Architects of the West Kingdom, um, uh, Shipwrights of the, of the North Sea, all of those different games, that line of games from Garfield. It's the same uh, artist that is in this one. And for some reason, it's not a clean style or anything like that, but I really enjoy uh, playing games that have this artwork on it because it's just... I don't know what it exactly is, but I just really enjoy that art style. Another pro of the game for me is that it does come with different modes of play. Um, I, I enjoy the semi-cooperative version of the game, and it is the only one that I've played uh, to, as of yet. I've not played the solo version because I'm not a solo gamer, uh, and I haven't played the full co-op version. I imagine that I will like this the, the full co-op version a little bit better, but... Having said that, I don't know. I'll have to come back and revisit that a little bit later on. But having played the semi-cooperative version, which is basically the core version of the game, it's the way that they want it, they meant it to be played. Gameplay is also uh, very fun. I enjoyed playing the game. Uh, some of the difficulties that came was not with gameplay per se, but with understanding how the different rules kind of worked together. So the gameplay is very fun. I really enjoy worker placement games. It's one of my favorite kinds of games that are out there. So I knew I was going to enjoy playing the game. Uh, but some of the difficulties that arose just were from how everything kind of fit together, not the actual gameplay. So uh, I really enjoy it, and it's a pro for me. I like worker placement games, and this one falls right in that, even if it's at the uh, meatier end of the spectrum. Now, with all of those positive things having been said, there are some negative things that need to be said, I think, about the game, uh, unfortunately so. Uh, first of all, um, I love it when player aids are used in games and, and they're put in there, but uh, a player aid needs to be useful. And while it was useful uh, for like in-game scoring and uh, for knowing what you get points for inside the game and what had to wait until the end of the game, that was the useful part. This part over here, the Merry Men phase, uh, it gives you the options that you have available to you, but it doesn't really give any type of help in uh, navigating all of those different things and how they affect different. So we were we, we rarely looked at these at all during the course of the game and we found ourselves rifling through the rule book a lot. And another person even went so far as to print, uh, type up and print out uh, rather wordy and verbose player aids that were necessary. My second pro of the game, and this actually kind of weighs in a little bit on the artwork side of the, uh, of the equation because the board is beautiful as far as the artwork that was employed to construct it. And um, I love how it all kind of flows together. And yet there are different uh, sections of the board that are clearly delineated. The problem and the con here is that it is a really busy game board. There is so much going on. I almost wish that they would have made it slightly larger so that there could be more divisions uh, in the area. But right now it's, I mean, the artwork is great and um, the representations of the different areas are all great, but they're all kind of crammed together and it makes for a very busy board. And that was problematic. Um, I didn't necessarily have so much trouble with it, but the people I was playing the game with did have a lot of problem with it. And so I'm mentioning it almost on their behalf uh, because 
I kind of liked the board, but I do see the point that they are making in that it's just so crammed together, it's hard sometimes to delineate and sometimes confusing to delineate which area is which. Another con for the game I'm going to mention in, a, in kind of a roundabout way. The, the, the main complaint that I heard from many of the people that I played with was that there were simply too many rules. There are too many things going on. There, there should have been something that was trimmed here and something that was trimmed there. And um, I'm going to say that I don't think that there were any more rules required to understand how to play this game than many other heavier Euro games that are out there. Um, I, I would say that the number of rules that are here are, is probably comparable to something like Teotihuacan or something like that because you have... Uh, these different areas that you can go to and then each of those different areas have slightly different rules on how they on, on how they work when you go there and and or slightly different points effects or something to that effect and so I don't think that there's any more rules that are here it's not a difficult game but there's just a lot of rules that go along that govern what you do in the game and and I think the presentation of those rules made it feel like there was more to it than there actually is. The The complaint, the con is, is that there, there is a general idea that there's too much in this box as far as rules and mechanisms are concerned. I disagree with that. So I'm thinking that it's possibly the presentation of those mechanisms and rules that are the actual problem. So all in all, I, 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 I hesitate uh, because the production quality of this game is really high. The gameplay, uh, for my opinion, is really enjoyable. But at the same time, it's also off, uh, you know, counterbalanced with some of the difficulties we have with the rule book and, and the player aids and just some of the... Uh, uh, I hesitate to use the word convolution because I don't think it's convoluted. It's just not presented well. And so... I enjoyed the game. I, there were other people that enjoyed the game that I played it with. There were some that were just overwhelmed by it. But as far as I'm concerned, my general idea of the game is I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10 because I did enjoy the game. I enjoy the theme. A lot of the elements of the mechanisms were thematic. Uh, sending envoys out to King Richard, going to the arbitrary competition, however uh, unnecessary it may have been, stealing from the rich, uh, robbing carriages, and those were all thematic elements into what would uh, ultimately be a, uh, probably a very a uh, themeless game uh, as far as its Euro style that is concerned. But they were able to incorporate those different things, and I like it when games do that. This is not one that's going to hit the table very often for me because it is longer and it is a little bit meatier, and that's usually not the kind of game that I'm, I'm wanting to play. But I did enjoy it. The production quality is great, and the, the, the gameplay is also fun. And I think it will hit the table every every so often just for its thematic quality alone. So uh, 7 out of 10 for me for Robin Hood, The Merry Men. And uh, I hope you guys will be able to give this a try and see what you think of it on your own. And then uh, come back and either agree or disagree with me. But anyway, thanks for taking your time. Uh, appreciate it. And we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care now.